Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do like a month in life instead of a day in life because I have a lot going on this month. It is currently, it is August when I'm filming this. I'm filming this intro a little bit later than I had planned because when I started filming this, I forgot to film an intro, so yes. So that's what today's video is. It's just going to be a month in the life instead of a day in the life. I am planning on doing more of an actual sit down and update video probably later on, maybe towards the end of the year instead of, because I thought about making this video just one of those and then I decided, you know, I'll just find a way to paste it, put it all together in one video for a month in the life. And you're going to see, um, you're going to see a lot, but most of it's going to be my chronic illness stuff. Okay, so it is 3.18. Just got home from my COVID test with a stupid stress test on Monday. Ugh. You. Yeah. I, I kept... I had a whole bunch of people tell me that would be the worst part about it. The whole worst thing about the whole thing will be the COVID test. And, um, they better be right. But now they've set it up to where you do it yourself. They give you the swab and wash you. <laughs> um, do it yourself. Ew. But it takes 24 to 48 hours to figure it out. Okay, so it is <clears throat> August 9th. It's 8.45, my brother's getting ready to leave for work, I'm getting ready to leave to go to the hospital, it's an hour away, so I'm leaving about 9, even though my appointment's at 10.30 because of traffic, you never know, and yeah, I, I am late, I know I can do this, I just have to do it hard, well, the actual mental thing probably doesn't be as hard as I'm thinking, but I don't know how I'm going to be prepared I am for this. I'm not sure I'm going to take the camera with me because I know I'm not going to be able to film in there. Yeah, so far I'm, I'm ready to go. I've just got to get my cell phone and pack my little bag I'm taking with me. I already put my meds in my um, protein bar in it. All I have to do is grab a pedial, grab my bottle of Pedialyte and a Coke and put that in there. And I think that's going to be good because I'm probably going to stop somewhere and get something to actually eat. Okay, so it's 2.05. I don't actually remember the last time I was... I know the last time I updated you was when I was getting ready to leave. But I've been home for about probably about an hour now. I got out of the hospital at, it was noon when we got, when I got done. I'm trying to think. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I don't feel good. And I don't know why, but my throat is freaking sore. That's the weird thing. I think the weirdest thing I have right now is a sore throat. <laughs> I'm going to try and finish this today. I'm not really halfway through it, but I'm close. And then I'm going to try to get it down today because I went so long without actually having anything to eat or drink. So, yeah. So I opened, as soon as I got out of the hospital, I got my Pedialyte and I had my Coke. I took my meds. I was dizzy when I went in for the stress test. I was hoping to make it pass a little bit farther past my target heart rate, but I didn't manage. I ended up I ended up starting to have starting to have chest pain. Halfway through, it, my dizziness got so bad at the end. I honestly thought I was going to pass out. And this is the thing, I used to have, my ears used to ring when I get really dizzy, and I have not felt that or heard that in years. And 
today at the end of the stress test, my ears were ringing. So, yeah, and I've got the halter monitor. Since it is just a, since it is a week, I got one of the, I got this one, and the Biotel, and it comes with a smartphone. Other than that, I'm doing good because we stopped and had Dixie Chili on our way home. I was hungry and I knew what I wanted. I was not sure what I wanted. But we were walking out and the woman who hooked up my halter monitor was talking about Dixie Chili. I'm thinking, yeah, that sounded really good. So, yeah. <laughs> and if you're not local, you probably don't. You probably don't know what that is. So, yeah. Okay, so it's August 10th. Yesterday, I went for my stress test and my halter monitor, which is, I kind of, I updated when I got home, but I didn't update anymore after I updated when I got home because I was exhausted. My body was just done. So I rested my, but I got my results for the stress test. Well, the hospital I go through uses a portal, like an online portal, and they send you the results through there. Technically, I won't get the actual results until I go see my cardiologist again on the 31st. It says it was normal for exercise, but it's also got some stuff on it that isn't necessarily normal. But it seems like everything lately I've gotten is relatively normal, so yeah. Okay, so it is August 13th. I wanted to get on here and do a little bit of an update. Um, I don't remember if I updated on test results that I got from my stress test. I'm pretty sure I did, but I'm going to fill you in. Monday I went for my stress test. I got the results Monday afternoon, like mid, late afternoon on Monday. and. I had normal reaction for, to exercising according or the normal response that they expect to the stress test, but the resting EKG showed something. So me being me, I'm an EMT, I work with paramedics, I kind of know when something isn't right. So the first thing I did was message a guy who I work with and said, because I've been talking to him the entire time, he knows about this, he's kind of, he's helped me out a lot <laughs> lately. So I asked him, he said, I'd have to see it. And I mean, okay. <laughs> but, and then yesterday, I believe, it must have, no, I think the day before, yeah, the day before yesterday, so Wednesday, I noticed that something else showed on my EKG from the stress test as well because every now and then results take time to pop up so we get one one day and then another part of it the next day sometimes that's just how it works on the portal at the hospital I go through does it after I had called the doctor a few times trying to get results explained to me well today finally I got to actually talk to, well, I got to talk to the nurse for the doctor that I see. The doctor I see is currently out of town. <laughs> Leave it to me to have something funky on my EKG and my doctor be out of town. So, I talk to them, they'll get, and they're looking at it like, and they, I'm sorry, there's thunder outside. They're admitting that it's, it's abnormal and it's, not a good finding so at least I got that and with this finding the doctor can't push it off on anxiety because there's no way that this is anxiety and I knew that starting out so it's not anxiety and we know that for 100% fact now because what showed up on the EKG so today I got to talk to the, the nurse that works for my doctor she showed it that another doctor looked at it and said we're gonna the best way to go about this is to keep an eye on my EKGs and to keep an eye on it and if I continue to have symptoms to follow up with my cardiologist 
and I already have a follow-up scheduled for the 31st of this month. I'm pretty sure that follow-up was meant to kind of discuss test results, but when I saw what I saw on the test results, I kind of went, yeah, that's not normal. I'm kind of hoping that my halter monitor shows something along the lines of the same thing. I'm not going to get into what it's called and what it was, what was seen and everything until I have concrete evidence or possibly concrete diagnosis. I'm thinking, I'm kind of hoping maybe now, because it was, if you continue to experience symptoms, I'm thinking, I have felt like shit for how many freaking months? I'm, it's not going away. So, just gonna start with turning off the monitor. And open the box. So here's the mailer. It's already prepaid, so all I have to do is shove it in the box, which is nice. I already wrote down the tracking number on it, so yeah. So I guess I'm just going to kind of put it back in the pockets where they're supposed to go. Slide the sensor out. Oh. And detach the flex that it's called. So it's backed up, so officially tomorrow will be bye bye box. <laughs> so basically, I was told my whole tomorrow was normal with an arrhythmia, and then today I was told by my regular doctor that the test results are slightly, or the test results are concerning, and that I needed to follow up. So I already have a follow-up scheduled. I had I've had it scheduled since the third. So basically, this will be my last update until that appointment. Because I basically received, hey, this is what's going on. Um, you're having several arrhythmias. You're having several PVCs. You need to go to. And I'm not 100% sure they are PVCs but that's what I was told I was having. But I also, from my last halter monitor, from what the cardiologist read on it, know that I've been having PACs as well, which are just atrial contractions instead of ventricular. So, yeah, so basically I'm just having weird palpitations. And so all I've got to do now is follow up. And I'll probably check back in with you on my follow-ups. Okay, so it is 9.16 on August 24th. Um, I am up so early because I, well, we had to take Nugget to get neutered today, so, or fixed, or whatever you want to call it. So, and the way it works out in our area, we have a bus that comes and picks the cats up and takes them and fixes them and then brings them back the next day. So, this morning, bright and early at 6.30, we took Nugget and put him on that bus and 
now I'm home. I'll pick him up tomorrow morning. I came home and I took a nap because there was just no way I was going to be able to function all day being up at 6 because I was up and I could already feel my body going, no, not going to work today. I wish I would have showed him when we dropped him off, but I didn't. Yesterday morning, I made an appointment with a neurologist. My dizzy meds have not been working at all, or very little if they are working, or for nowhere near as long as they're supposed to. My dose is supposed to work for 12 hours, and currently I've been lucky if it works 30 minutes to an hour. I wasn't planning on making this appointment, I wasn't planning on seeing another neurologist. I'm going to get some of this stuff figured out, I'm going to get back to work, and <laughs> Currently, I think the only way that's going to happen is if I go see all these doctors. And honestly, part of me thinks all I'm doing is add another, adding another doctor to the list of people that have to medically clear me to go back to work. If I don't have to do an injection or take a sedative when I get dizzy, I'm more than willing to go see a neurologist to see what we can do. Say nuggets home. <laughs> yeah. Nuggets home. Got a little spot for his tattoo because he's been neutered. Yeah. Already back to your normal self, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it is 7 p.m. on August 31st. I went to my cardiologist today for follow-up to get my test results on my stress test as well as my halter monitor that I did at the beginning of this video. I wasn't really given any answers. I was kind of expecting that. The doctor didn't even realize that there was something wrong on one of the EKGs that was ran during the stress test. And I mentioned it and he's like, what? And he went through and looked and went, oh, okay. And then said, that could be completely normal. So, yeah, so basically I wasn't given anything. Which honestly is kind of what I expected. I didn't expect any real answers because it just kind of seems like lately I don't get any answers. But he is going to run more tests to rule some stuff out. And I don't have to go back to the cardiologist for another six months. If the next two tests are normal, I'm going to go in for a CT angiogram on the 10th and I have an ultrasound. The ultrasound is just to rule out my gallbladder. I'm going to make sure I'm not having gall gallbladder issues before I go any farther out. So I'm not going to include those two tests in this video. I'm going to include those in. A separate video if I'm or in next month I think I'm gonna keep kind of doing like videos like this where I do a whole month of my medical stuff all in one and maybe something else included if a little bit of my daily life if you like it like that if you don't let me know and I can do like a day in the life video where I go in for my ultrasound and my angiogram I'll just put those in the same video because I just I don't feel like doing two separate videos for that, so I'm just going to kind of call this video finished. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my monthly chronic illness videos like this, let me know. If you want them another, like you just want like days in the life and all that, let me know down below because I don't, I'm going to see how this works out and kind of face all this. So. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what kind of format you like. And other than that, if you've if you've not done so, hit the red subscribe button down below. 
Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.